Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine Crick. Welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. On this episode, I'm going to release the prophetic word of 2023 and what it means for you. Every year in my ministry at Fivefold Church, there is a prophetic word of the year that is released. And this word is for all who will receive it in faith. God is up to something specific each year for his whole body and in your personal lives. This year, in 2023, the promises will be fulfilled. There are different seasons in life in our walk with God. God is a promise maker and a promise keeper. He is always saying what he's going to do, making a promise and calling his people to trust him and believe in this promise Hold on to this promise until they see it come to pass. That's who he is. He's a promise-keeping God, and his promises never fail. Throughout scripture, we see God releasing promises to his servants, from Abraham to Joseph to all of the Israelites, speaking of the promise of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ. David had the promise that he would be king. Whenever there's prophecies, these are promises that God is releasing. All the prophecies that you're seeing being spoken throughout the Word of God, they are promises for God's people to believe in and see come to pass. There's a season when God releases the promise. Then there's a season where God takes you through a process and a wilderness season to mold your heart, to refine you through the fire, to prepare you to be able to walk in the promise when the fulfillment time comes. If you don't go through this season, you won't be able to handle the promise. You won't be able to, you, you could lose it. So we have these different seasons. We have this wilderness season, which many times is a long season, a longer than we imagine it to be. And then there indeed is a season where God fulfills the promise. You step into that promised land and you can taste and see that the Lord is good and faithful, that that which you believed in years ago has really come to pass. God did exactly what he said he was gonna do. So I'm so excited and happy to announce that this year is gonna be a joyous, wonderful year where you will see the promises of God fulfilled in your life. When we're speaking of the prophetic word of the year, it's not a word for you to just hear and listen to and just sit back and relax and watch it unfold. But you have a part to play in seeing this word of the year promise come to pass. And this direction for you, it's a prophetic direction to see the word come to pass is to take a step. Take a step to see the promises fulfilled. There's a story in the Bible in 2 Kings 7, it says that the prophet Elisha, he prophesied something very powerful amidst a severe famine, so bad that cannibalism was literally taking place. You can see it in chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6. It was that severe of a famine and prophet Elijah prophesied this, 2 Kings 7, 1, then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a measure of finely milled flour will sell for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Now this prophecy he's saying is speaking that flour, barley, the food, uh, things to make food is going to be sold at an extremely low price. Now when he prophesies this, there's no food at all. So what he is saying is wild. It would be like in today's time, let's say that there's no gas at all. There's been no gas for a long, long time. And all of a sudden a prophet says, gas will be sold at 10 cents a gallon. When, like where I live in Los Angeles right now, it's in the four to $5 range. 10 cents, that would be like, what in the world? How could that ever be? And especially now when we can't even buy gas for a million dollars because there's none of it. That's, that, that's how it was what he was saying, how 
powerful and wild it was. So there was a king's officer at the gate who he heard this prophecy and he immediately doubted. He says, even if God can open up the windows of heaven and bring rain, how can this be basically? He doubted. And Elisha says, prophet Elisha says, you will see it come to pass, but you won't be able to eat and enjoy. So there are, so meanwhile, there are some people who had leprosy on the gate of the city and they are talking to themselves. They're saying, we're starving. We're, we could die of starvation. If we stay here and do nothing, we're going to die. So our other option is to go into the Armenian camp which was their enemies, a military camp, which had all sorts of supplies, food, equipment, clothing, everything, money. But they say we could go there and they're our enemies so they could kill us and we could die. Or maybe they'll let us live. So they basically decide, well, we're gonna die if we stay here. We might as well take a step, take a risk, trust God, and go check out the Armenian camp. And they get there and they find the camp abandoned completely with all sorts of food and supplies and silver and gold left there. Turns out the Armenian army, God made them to hear chariots and a large army that didn't exist, but God made them to hear this so that this Armenian army would think that there was huge armies coming to attack them. They had so much fear that they ran out of the city they ran out of their camp and they left everything there. So God set this up to save the Israelites. So the people with leprosy, they decide to go back to Israel and tell the king what they found. The king didn't believe them at first. He sends, he sends a few people to go check it out to try to see if he can track down the Armeans. They try to track them down and they find that, that, that they, where they fled, they stripped their belongings. They were in such a hurry, so afraid, they even stripped what was on them. So the Israelites then go and rush into the city and they're starving. So there's like a stampede and, they are, and, and the prophecy comes to pass. What Elisha said, that about, tomorrow about this time, a measure of finely milled flour will sell for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Now that officer was there at the gate, watched this prophecy come to pass, but there was a stampede to get all the food and he ended up dying in that. So that prophecy came to pass that he wouldn't be able to see it because he doubted. So the lesson from this story that applies to this word that God has for you is that, is that God is going to fulfill promises, promises that maybe seem so unlikely right now. Maybe you feel so far away from the promised land, the circumstances in your life. Like the people in Israel were, they were eating, cannibalism was happening. And then there's this promise that not only would they have food, but it would be more plentiful than ever before, and ever before, that it would be cheap. So in the same way, these promises you've been waiting on, Maybe even you feel like you've gone backwards, farther away from the promise. Maybe you feel like, I don't see how it could happen this year, but God has said this is the year that he's going to be fulfilling the promises. So God is going to fulfill these promises in unlikely ways, in supernatural ways, where you will see it's only by his miraculous power, his hand comes upon your situation and makes the promise to be fulfilled. But the lepers, they, if they, they realized if they sat there and did nothing, they wouldn't see the promise come to pass. So they were following the leading of God and they took a step. Them taking that step led to them walking into the promised land, seeing the promises be fulfilled. So in the same way, there's going to be a step or steps that God is asking you to take this year. And with those steps, after you take those steps, you're going to see the promise be fulfilled. So this is not a year to be lazy. This is not a year to sit back and be distracted. But it's a year to be serious about listening for God's voice, not missing it, humbling yourself, working hard on what he's called you to do, to do whatever that step is, to give your all in that step 
make that step priority so you can see the promises be fulfilled. I'm so excited for the promises of God for revival to come to pass this year, that God's revival would expand exponentially, reaching so many more people, millions of people, that so many who are still oppressed now, even though it's revival, there are still so many people who have not been reached, who do not even know that God can deliver them and heal them, that he wants to. There are tons, millions of those people out there. This is the year God is going to break doors open and reach those people in ways that will shock us and increase his revival so hugely. So this is one of the promises that will be fulfilled corporately. And also God will fulfill promises individually in your life that he's made you. I want to share a testimony of a promise I saw fulfilled in my life in the past. Well, I should say the beginning of the promise. It was like stepping into the promised land, but still waiting to see the other promises fulfilled. And this is the year. So six and a half years ago, I received a prophecy that I was called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ and I was called to reach the nations and that God would do many shocking miracles through me. And this was really shocking and wild to believe as public speaking and ministering, preaching was my biggest weakness and fear. I didn't know how on earth this was gonna happen, this prophecy, this promise from God, but I believed, I believed wholeheartedly this was God speaking and that it really, this promise would come to pass. So I obeyed him, I took the step that he was calling me to do, and I started the church he called me to start, and I focused my life completely on that call, on ministering to his people. And um, then there was another prophecy, promise that was released, and this is to the body of Christ. It was released about a year later, and it was that God has heard America and the world's prayers, many prayers of revival over many years and generations. He's heard them and he's answering them now. Revival is now. God has decided to move now. No longer the time for praying for revival, but revival is now. Now that prophecy was released and it for sure was now in the spiritual realm, but it would not be overnight that we saw the promise fulfilled of how we imagine and picture revival. It was there in the spiritual realm but I was not seeing it yet, like many miracles happening everywhere and word spreading and tons of people coming and joining the revival. So for years, I'm believing in this promise. Shortly after that prophecy was released, about a year later, God spoke to me and he said, the way you're going to see this revival break out, that promise be fulfilled, and the promises I've made you for your calling, for your life, is by um, people will see short one minute videos. And these videos, God's gonna touch them through these videos and it's how word's gonna spread and it's how revival's gonna break out. So God spoke to me, these videos need to happen. You need to, they need to be made, they need to be released. I had like a very tiny team and no one really knew how to edit. I didn't know how to edit. I taught myself how to edit though, because God was saying now to take the step. So I needed to take the step and it was hard, it was uncomfortable, it wasn't completely fun, but I just taught myself how to edit and I spent many hours for years editing videos, editing sermons and editing one minute videos. And I would put all these videos out for years. So I made these videos for two and a half years and saw very little likes, comments, or followers or shares of these videos. But I just kept going. God spoke to me when he first said to put out these videos. He said, it's gonna be like the Israelites, how they walked around the walls of Jericho in obedience. And then eventually their obedience, it added up. Like eventually, because they obeyed, God made the walls to come down and they entered the promised land. So God spoke to me, that's how it would be. So I, I heard that clearly, I need to take that step and keep taking that step keep putting those videos out, keep going around those walls of Jericho. And sure enough, two and a half years later of doing that consistently, weekly, never giving up, on December 30th, I put a video, one minute video out on TikTok 
uh, a montage of God moving in power. And that video went viral by the next day on the 31st of 2020. There were thousands of comments on that video testifying of miracles people had received while watching that video. And by January 1st, which is my 30th birthday, the video had 1 million views. I was amazed. I was amazed at the faithfulness of God and the, the, the truth that we must take a step to see the promise be fulfilled. So I saw just God bless the work of my hands and I just was so grateful. I listened to that word from God to take the step. And that was literally the promise fulfilled. I mean, that was the beginning of the promise fulfilled, of revival breaking out. That video then led to a big following coming and I did lives and so many miracles happened on the lives. Then people started coming to church in the park where we were having services because of that one video going viral, just people, the word was spreading online. So eventually, a couple months later, March 2021, a woman travels from Massachusetts to encounter God at the park. We had 20 people there at the park. I prayed for her, demons start trembling in her, and she was set free of a demon. And that was the first deliverance we ever saw at Fivefold Church and in my ministry. And then a video of that went viral. Then all the deliverance is happening every Sunday. Then more videos went viral. So then two months later, 300 people showed up. From 22 months to 70, about two months later to the next week, 300 showed up. And that was really revival breaking out. And hundreds have come to Fivefold Church ever since. Revival's increased from there. I've ministered at events about every week for a year and a half in different cities and 10 nations now. So this promise began to be fulfilled through that video that God told me to do two and a half years ago. Thank God I took that step. I wanna encourage you right now, the power of obeying God in the prophetic word. It was actually a prophetic word that I heard that said, you know, to take that step of making those videos. And I'm so grateful I listened to that prophetic word. I wanna encourage you to take this prophetic word seriously, take it to heart, because you're gonna see that God will really do what he said he will do. And how to take the step? Well, number one, humble yourself and just take this word to heart. Take it seriously, take it with reverence and humble yourself. Like, Lord, like just tell him, I don't wanna miss the step. I don't wanna miss this direction that you have for me this year. Lord, whether it's one direction that I need to follow and just keep going with it, like the case for me, whether it's several directions, several steps. I don't wanna miss any of them, Lord. If it requires hard work, if it requires sacrifice, if it requires more denying of myself, I don't care, Lord, have your way. Tell God that, really surrender to him and tell him, I don't wanna miss this step that you have for me to take, Lord. So. Make it clear to me. He will be so faithful to make it clear to you. Um, come with confirmation, these step or steps you need to take. For some of you, it might be, for one, personal promises God's made you. The step you need to take, it could be, for some of you, it is ways that God has spoken to you in the past, maybe last year, where he said, do this, take this step, but you were afraid, you were lazy, you just procrastinated, you didn't take it seriously, you were distracted, you weren't surrendered. It might have been any of these thing, cases that made you to not take the step. So for some of you, God's already spoken that step. Now is the time to really take it seriously and finally obey Him. Secondly, God's promises do not mean your personal ambitions or dreams. Many of the dreams that you have are dreams that God has given you. And those dreams would be promises he's made you. But then there could be for you dreams you have that aren't from God, but they're your own dreams that he wants you to surrender. There could also be good, beautiful dreams that you have that are pure, but just aren't God's dreams, just aren't his plans for you. In fact, he is better. So what's important to know in this prophetic word is that you understand that this word is for the promises that God's made you. 
not dreams of your own. So don't take this word and just run with it in your personal ambition type way. Really come with reverence, humbly before God, and say, Lord, I just want your promises fulfilled and I want to spend my time taking the step towards your promises, not taking an ambitious step towards my personal dreams that aren't yours. And lastly, a step that is very important for you, for every person, is to serve God in his kingdom, in his work. God's work is the most important to him than anything. God will use you in so many different ways to expand his kingdom, but it's very important to never neglect his church. His church, his place of equipping the body, his place where big healings and deliverances and miracles for his people take place. We can't neglect the church while only going after our personal God's promises for our life. We have to know that we are a part of the body and God wants us to play a part in his, his work of his church. So he's calling every one of his children to serve him in the church in some way. It, if you watch online, you can still serve. There's still, there's still ways to serve God. And if it's online, one of the biggest ways is to share videos, is to spread the word, is to share your testimony far and wide so that more people can come and know where to receive from him, know where to be equipped. When you take care of God's business, he takes care of your business. So in terms of his kingdom business in his church, his work in his church, take care of it. Give a hand. There's needs everywhere. Um, be willing to serve. Be willing to set aside your personal ambitions, dreams, personal promises sometimes, and, and serve God's sacrifice for him, serve him in his church. So that is important to not be neglected. That's a part of the step um, that God is calling you to take. And that's also because this promises that shall be fulfilled this year includes the promises corporately of revival, spreading and expanding like we have never seen in our lifetime. So this is part of your promise, but you have to play a part in seeing that promise come to pass and for you to really be part of this revival. So if you're at a place right now where you're like, I don't know what this, I don't know what the individual promises for me are even. I don't even know the step to take. The first step you should take then is definitely to serve God in his kingdom, to take a step to spread his word, spread the word that revivals now, share testimonies of what God has been doing, share your personal testimony, make a video of how God's changed you and transformed you and healed you and delivered you in his move. Make more of an effort, take more of steps to reach people for Jesus. And how to hear the voice of God speaking what the steps are. It may come, it can come in different ways. It's important to hear, to be open to hear God's voice through his vessels, his teachers, his ministers, like today. Humble yourself to hear that word. It could come through a sermon sometime where he's giving you that step you're supposed to take. Also spend time in his word. This is a big place to hear his voice. As you read his word, God begins to speak to you. Meditate on his word. He will speak to you. And... So make sure you surrender to God and say, Lord, lead me how you want. Lead me in what that step is. And be patient. Sometimes for some of you, the steps will be revealed as time goes on. It won't be for everyone. It won't be here's the step or here are the steps right now, everything, day one. But be patient and be on alert. Have your ears open, ready to hear that step, that direction from God and be ready to quickly obey. This is going to be such an amazing year, the best year yet. We're going to be walking in the promised land and rejoicing and sharing with the world how good our God is. I can't wait for all that God has in store in 2023. I declare that this word must come to pass in your life. 
I declare that these promises will come to pass in your life this year. And I declare nothing to keep you from seeing these promises come to pass. Nothing shall keep you from taking the steps required to see the promise come to pass. I declare doors to be shut of distractions in your life. People who are bringing distractions and keeping you from serving God, I declare those doors to be closed and I break demonic soul ties that have been holding you back from hearing God and serving God. I declare this anointing to come upon you and to be filled with strength, with energy, with joy, with zeal, to serve God, to step into his promises this year. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna share with you this video that went viral that I shared about earlier, this moment where I saw the promise be fulfilled after taking this step. January 1st, it's my 30th birthday, and this is my wish, that you and 30 million other people would receive a miracle as you watch this video. My leg was really hurting. I went online, and she was praying, and she was saying that there was somebody with leg hurting. Someone has a leg pain. I declare healing to you now. Immediately, the pain went away. I really felt the presence of God. I just experienced, just felt like his power was so strong on me. anxiety, night terrors, addictions, go in Jesus' name. Receive the miracle that you need now in the mighty name of Jesus. On New Year's Eve, I released a video called Miracle Zone. In just one day, it had one million views. And in the comments, there was testimony after testimony of people receiving miracles. Sickness leaving bodies, depression and anxiety lifting off, people feeling the power of God, people coming to Jesus just by watching the video. Since then, I've gone live each week. And on every live, people testify of miracles they're receiving during the live. Someone asked for prayer on yesterday's live for her nephew who has cancer. Today, the results showed that the cancer went from 80% to 0.05% in his body. Glory to God for all that he has done. God bless you. We'll see you on the next episode. Revival is now. Revival is now. Your kingdom is